Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Today's video is going to be a video suggestion by a subscriber and friend of mine. It's going to be on tips for safely handling venomous snakes with the hook. So hook tips. In this video, I'm going to go over arboreal vipers, terrestrial vipers, cobras, so smaller cobras, I guess medium-sized cobra, large cobra. So that's what you're going to expect in today's video. The next video, I'm going to expand on the tips with other things to keep in mind if you plan on working with these animals. So other things to consider that I think are valuable if you plan to work on venomous snakes. And before we even begin, when you're watching this, take what you need, but in no means am I telling you to go out and try this. Don't attempt anything you see on my channel. I am a professional. I do this for a living. These are things that I personally find useful. Not to encourage you to go try it, but things that I find useful. And regardless if you work with them or not, maybe you can learn a thing or two from what I say. But the best thing is to get a mentor, learn from them, find what works for you. Remain open though, because you can always learn more. If you stick to one thing and there's something out there, another technique that might work better to keep you safe, you're not gonna be able to learn those things if you're closed-minded and think your way is the right way. So always remain open, always continue to absorb knowledge and learn. But yeah, if you're new here, I post videos on venomous snakes. So if that's something you enjoy, consider subscribing. And yeah, guys, I actually, I'm gonna use this GoPro to try to give point of view things for what I'm talking about. So you can see it from my point of view and I can discuss things and actually show you in real time what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So to begin, we're going to start with terrestrial vipers. And more specifically, we're going to start with baby vipers with this copperhead right here, this baby copperhead. Now, before even starting with it, the best thing for me that I found was practicing using the hook with non-venomous snakes, such as water snakes. Practicing using the hook and becoming so comfortable with it that I know how to control the animal and also know how to do it in one go. And what I mean by that is knowing where to hook and be able to lift it up on what I call the balance point to do that in one go. Because repetitive touch, repetitive attempts to hook is gonna cause the snake to react, become overreactive and panic. And it's best to avoid repetitive touch so practicing being able to do it in that first go is a major advantage and it's going to help tenfold in working with these animals. It's going to avoid many problems. Now with vipers, sometimes they are not good at riding the hook and they will fall off. They'll continuously just keep moving and fall off. In situations like that, it's going to be best to use two hooks. That's what I do with vipers that are small because if you try to tail a small viper, if they want to, they can whip around and bite you. So with the small vipers, it's not necessary to tail and it's going to cause problems, especially if they're panicked. Like I said, if they're flailing off of the hook and your first reaction is to grab it, it can whip around and tag you. So using two hooks, is going to avoid problems like that. But again, knowing how to do it in that one go and using the hooks, being able to control the animal is, it's just gonna, it's gonna make life so much easier when working with these animals. And another thing going off of the repetitive touch if let's say if I hook it a little too far up, being patient, just waiting for that right moment to lift up. In, instead of doing the rehooking, 
if you're in a situation where you can just wait a little bit and then lift up, it's 10 times better than rehooking. But there are scenarios, of course, where you're going to have to rehook. There's going to be lots of scenarios where the things that I'm mentioning are not even possible and you're going to have to adjust and do the best you can. But knowing what to do in situations where things don't go as planned is what's going to change a bad situation from happening and avoid potential problems. If you know, okay, this snake is panicking and it's falling off the hook and it's on the ground now, I have to grab another hook and now just quickly hook it and try to get it in a container, get it contained pretty much. Up next is an adult terrestrial viper, the saw scaled viper. Now again, similar to the baby copperhead, we still want to be able to do it in one go, one attempt. But with the larger ones, especially this one right here, she's not great at staying on the hook. So if I didn't have it perfectly right here, she would slide off. She falls off the hook constantly. So with her, again, the best approach is using two hooks. So much better, so much easier, and being able to control where you want the snake to go. Now this is the largest, well possibly the Gaboon Viper I have, it might be the largest of the terrestrial vipers I have but nothing compared to the large rattlesnakes at my work. Now when talking about tailing, this is something, again, I'm gonna reiterate, do not attempt anything you see on my channel, but with the larger vipers, when I'm approaching, especially a new one, a snake that I have never worked with before, I will use a barrier to see how they react. For instance, putting part of their body over and touching the back and seeing how they react. Because with snakes, a lot of times when you do that first initial touch, they can react by whipping around. And if there's that little barrier, it at least gives a little bit of time to react and let go. But with tailing, what I do is I hook, and another thing again about being patient, waiting for the snake to get to the right point, and then I gently put my hand under, not at the tip of the tail. The tip of the tail again will cause that reaction more so than above the cloaca. So I wait again gently, until it gets to a certain point and I place my hand under. So again, being patient with the snake. So giving it time. And another thing I do is I don't just reach and grab because again, if they react, they're on the ground, they can whip around quickly. What I find personally is that lifting up throws them off a little bit and then gently grabbing and not even grabbing gently grasping above like right near the cloaca so right where the tail starts because grabbing the tip of the tail will cause a reaction more so than around the cloaca and then of course with the tailing Practicing again with non-venomous snakes such as water snakes because they are typically very defensive. Being able to avoid a bite using a hook, tailing, and again, like I said, with using two hooks or one hook, being able to maneuver the animal where you want it to go. And also to counteract any of their movements. So if this snake started to crawl back on, its, on the hook or on its body, being able to do the right thing at the right moment. And we're going to go over more of that with the cobras. They're better at showing those behaviors. 
in situations where things happen quickly, knowing what to do right away is going to benefit you and avoid problems. It's also going to benefit the animal because if you overreact in situations, you're going to cause them to overreact. But when things happen quickly, you may have to let go and drop the animal. And that's just how it is sometimes. But avoiding any problems, potential problems, such as a bite, is important. So knowing what to do at the right time is something that's got to come naturally. For the arboreal vipers, we're going to do it a little different because one of the main things you're going to run into is them hooking themselves and coiling up onto things. So in situations like this, what I find the best way to do is using two hooks. So lifting up on the front part with one of the hooks and kind of tickling the back part with the other hook. And as you can see, it encourages them to move off of what they're clinging onto. But in that situation, in the actual enclosure, you'll probably have other things in there as well. And it's gonna continuously hook onto things. So the main thing that I find helpful is, again, with the hook on the front part, lifting up. But yeah, the best thing I find is two hooks to get it out of the enclosure. It helps with getting it untangled on whatever it's coiled against and you can also maneuver so that it doesn't go to a different branch and get coiled up on there as well. So the best thing with arboreal vipers is that they're typically very good at staying on the hook, but that's not always the case. A lot of times they will flail off and not stay on the hook well, and you've got to continuously hook and keep them on. But again, using two hooks, avoids that problem because they are easier to keep on the hook when there's two. Another thing with the arboreal vipers, they tend to love to climb up on the hook. We'll see if this one does it. And in that situation, again, having two hooks, it's great to adjust the snake, but also you may even have to put the hook down, use another hook. They're notorious for taking over hooks. So here's an example of it taking over the hook. So I can adjust with this hook or sometimes you may have to lay the hook down gently and just use another hook to lift up. These are all scenarios you're going to find yourself in and doing the right thing and knowing what to do in that situation is going to make everything smooth for you and the snake. Now we're going to move on to the cobras. Wait a minute. If I'm talking about cobras, why do I have this Nelson's milk snake out? Well, that's going to be the first thing. What I feel has helped me most with handling cobras is practicing with black racers and king snakes. Their body movement it's very similar to that of cobras. The twists and turns to stop cobras from climbing up on their bodies works with these guys. And that's why I have this one out to show that this is perfect for practicing. Now this is a younger one um, and it's not very defensive, so it's not the best, but like I said, black racers, notorious for being very defensive, very psychotic. Those are great for practicing. As you can see he's trying to climb up on his body and it's something similar that cobras do you may have to let go but again practicing not getting bit using king snake black racer and indigo snake so things like the black tailed Kribo, those are great great for practicing Moving on with baby cobras using this beautiful 
baby Indo-Chinese spitting cobra, we're going to talk about things that work best, in my opinion, for them. Again, many of the same things are going to apply that I've went over with the uh, vipers. That being being patient, not reaching and grabbing if they start to panic and fall off the hook, and using two hooks. The thing with Cobra, as you can see, it's a lot more active, moving around a lot more, a lot more chaotic. And there's going to be an additional thing when talking about Cobras. So when I'm tailing Cobras, and I mentioned with the Milk Snake about the body movements and the maneuvers to the maneuvers to stop the cobra from climbing up on its body, the twists and turns that I'll use on the bigger cobras is not going to work with the babies. It does in some sense, but a lot of the times doing the twists and turns with babies causes them to be able to climb up on their body faster, and that's not what you want. So that's something to consider when working with the younger and smaller baby cobras. But again, about the no repetitive touch and being able to get that balance point with one, one try, one attempt. So for me, with baby cobras, I always, especially brand new babies that are smaller than this even, I always have a container prepared in case it tries to bail. So if I'm cleaning out an enclosure, for example, and I'm putting the snake back, there's always a container beneath the enclosure. So if it falls out when it panics, that it'll fall in something and stay contained. Because I've had situations where baby cobras fall on the ground and my first reaction is to just reach and grab. And like I mentioned, reaching and grabbing can cause them to whip around and bite. So to avoid that, I'm always prepared. So with that in mind, I'm always prepared for situations like that by having things in place in case something goes wrong. Moving on to medium sized cobras, we're going to talk about some of the things that arise with these guys. So one of the things is trying to climb up on the hook. Another thing is backing up off the hook. Now that I'm filming, I don't know if these things are going to occur, but we will see. As you saw right there, he tried to pull back a little bit and also climb on the body. But this is a major thing with Cobras, trying to back up like it is now and being able to maneuver to make it fall back down or if it gets to a certain point, dropping the snake completely and redoing. So in that situation, which I probably missed, I readjusted the hook. So that's probably going to be a problem with the larger Cobras is showing certain behaviors and actually getting it on film. But I'll check after to make sure it's on camera, but who knows. Anyways, you see backing up, climbing up, and just hook movement and placement is very important in my opinion with Cobras. And these are very laid back. There are some that are extremely chaotic and flailing around constantly and knowing what to do in an instant is the difference from being successful with working with these animals and failure. So just to summarize with the medium sized cobras, them backing up off the hook or trying to climb up on the body, the things that I find most important is being able to know where to place the hook and when to let go the right moment and also the maneuvers involved in getting them to fall off the hook or fall back down if they're trying to climb up on their body twisting and making them fall back down. Those to me are the most important things when working with cobras.
So we're going to end off with the larger Cobras with this monocle Cobra. Now, to be honest, there's not much more for me to say other than what I've already gone over. Using hooks, using two hooks, and being able to counteract what the snake does in order for you to avoid any potential problems and also to cause the snake to be comfortable and not overreact. Again, when the snake's climbing back on its body, knowing what to do in a calm manner to avoid that from happening is going to be what separates you and causes you to be successful in working with these animals or a failure. When you overreact, you're going to cause the snake to overreact and that's when accidents happen. But to just reiterate with the cobras, even the long cobras like this, the adults, the same things come into play. Knowing the maneuvers to stop them from climbing up on themselves, knowing hook placement, knowing when to let go. These are the most important things. Well, everyone, thank you for watching. When I film my videos, I go off the top of my head, so I'm sure I forgot many things that I would, would have liked to say or left out things and that I didn't even think about. So if there's other tips that you feel should have been included, please let me know. But I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, at some point I'm gonna add additional tips in an upcoming video. Maybe the next one, maybe a few after this. So stay tuned for that additional venomous tips. But thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Take care everyone, love y'all.